Our chief strategist for the Clinton campaign, also the top pollster uh, as well. And Joel, thank you for coming in this morning. You just heard what Eric Trump had to say. And I want to show a video that, that gets into what he was talking about, these this charges of inciting violence. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm -hmm. you will be attacked at Trump rallies. That's what we want. Oh, so, oh, oh, so that's part of the process that's, of, get, of the eliciting point. the reaction. The whole point okay. of it is we know that Trump's people will, will freak out, his security team will freak out, and his supporters will lose their this is pretty shocking stuff. Now, I know there have been questions about these O'Keefe videos in the past, about the editing of and these videos. questions equipment. of O'Keefe. Yet, yet <laughs> both those operatives who were in these videos have now resigned, and they did receive money from the DNC. They were subcontractors. Isn't this exactly the kind of behavior you all have been complaining about? Well, it's, it's, it's a video of somebody who has a track record of doctoring videos. These people have resigned, whether they were talking to him on camera or whether there's some snippet there that's been manipulated and taken out of context, I don't know. It's actually the first time I've seen the video, George. But what's been going on throughout this campaign, in Donald Trump's own words, we have video of Donald Trump saying, punch him in the mouth. I want him carried out on a stretcher. I mean, this is a candidate running for president of the United States. So if the Republicans and Donald Trump or Eric Trump want to talk about James O'Keefe, Instead of the words of the nominee of the Republican Party, I think it's showing a sign of desperation here in the last weeks of the but campaign. But are you confident you don't have other operatives out there doing exactly the same thing? I'm pretty confident. I mean, I, I think, as I said, we're talking about a guy who has a track record of doctoring videos. These people resigned, uh, as you said. Um, and if this was happening day in and day out, uh, we would know about it, number one. And number two, Donald Trump, day after day, on the stump, was inciting people at his... He said, I'd like to punch him in the mouth. I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and I wouldn't lose a single vote. I mean, let's be honest about who here has been inciting violence day in and day out at Trump rallies. It's been Donald Trump. And I think it's part of the reason uh, why he's been lagging in the polls, why he's been unable to reach beyond his base. George. You saw our poll out this morning, 50 to 38. That's the biggest margin we've shown in any of our polls. Number one, is that what you all think is happening with the race right now? Is it over? Well, I, look, I, I don't think it's... I've been in this for a while. I don't think it's over till the people vote. But what I think has been happening uh, consistently, and especially from the conventions on and through the debates, is that Hillary Clinton's the only candidate in this race who's been talking to people beyond their base. Yes, we have a strong Democratic base. It's stronger than the Republican base. But she's been reaching out to Republicans, independents, moderate voters. I think your poll shows that. Uh, and the reason why is because these people believe in America, they're optimistic about America, and they want a president who will lift each other up, not tear each other down. The poll also shows that almost 60 percent, 59 percent of voters still uh, are having a hard time with how Hillary Clinton is handling this whole email issue. Can you put that behind you? Well, I think when you look at your poll numbers, I think it is one factor that people are putting into their whole decision. And what your poll shows is the voters have put it behind them. They're making a decision now between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and they're factoring in everything they know about the people. There's a lot of things in there about Donald Trump that people are very unsatisfied with, including the fact that he's calling the election rigged and says he won't accept the results. We've also had a lot of a focus on these WikiLeaks emails in recent days. Donald Trump yesterday in, in, in Gettysburg talked about banning contributions from lo lobbyists who register for foreign, uh, com for foreign uh, either foreign governments or corporations. And there was an exchange in the emails between Jennifer Palmieri and Robbie Mook where you guys debating whether or not to take money from foreign lobbyists. Robbie Mook, I'm okay just taking the money and dealing with any attacks. Are you guys okay with that? Jennifer Palmieri, take the money. Does Donald Trump have a point right there? Should this kind of should these kind of contributions be allowed? Well, first of all, I'll tell you something. I haven't spent a lot of time reading through uh, WikiLeaks emails, but I will tell you this: what we know is that many are not authentic. We know that this is a hack. Seventeen but that, you of know, Russians. No, because these emails, we have no idea whether they are authentic or not, or whether they've been tampered with. Once the Russians, which seventeen American intelligence agencies say are responsible for these hackings, have been manipulated. I've seen things. I'm not going to go into detail. Details, the few but you're I've not looked suggesting at, that those are, uh, they those may are well be. I don't know. I know I've seen things that aren't authentic, that we know aren't authentic, and it's not surprising. What's ridiculous about this whole conversation is that 17 intelligence agencies have said the Russians are responsible for this. Donald Trump refuses to accept it, refuses to condemn them. They are meddling in an American election for the first time in history, as far as we know, and we have a Republican nominee for president who refuses to acknowledge 
acknowledge what the American intelligence agencies have confirmed or condemn the bad actors here who happen to be the Russians. Let's take a look at the strategy for the last two weeks. How explicit is Hillary Clinton going to be in, in saying, give me a Congress uh, I, I can work with, number one? And as, you've, as you allocate resources, we saw you go into Arizona this week. How are you going to divide time between trying to run up the electoral map and trying to get a Senate and a House on your side? Look, I think you make these decisions almost day by day, George. You're in the last, you know, two weeks of a campaign, basically 16 days at this point. You know what it's like in those days. You want to make sure you solidify uh, the votes in the states that you have and reach out uh, where you can. I think in terms of going forward with the Congress, I mean, Hillary Clinton has made it clear that she wants to bring this country together. She wants to unite people. As how she is said she in the. How do that? Look, you, you were in the White House with her. You know how she does it. The same way she worked with Tom DeLay, a Republican, the whip of the floor of the House of Representatives, to get reform on foster care to get more kids adopted so that they could get adopted out of foster care. She worked with someone who was a bitter arch enemy to find common ground on issues you agree on and move the ball forward to make progress that will make a difference in people's lives. It's what she did when she got, you know, defeated on health care in 94, went back to work, worked with Democrats and Republicans to get CHIP insurance for kids passed that now insure 8 million kids. She has a track record of doing that. Look, no one's here going into this with rose-colored glasses saying it's going to be easy. But I think there's only one candidate in the race, and that is Hillary Clinton, who's talking about the need to bring the country together, to be building an economy that works for everyone, not those at the top, and make sure that as a country, we create the country we want to be, living up to our values, where we do have each other's backs, not turning our backs on each other. What's your biggest worry right now? Last couple of weeks, your biggest worry is something unexpected. You know, the first race I did, George, uh, on, the, on the consulting side when I left journalism was with Governor Mario Cuomo, and he said to me, the first day I worked from Benenson, you know, in every election, there are going to be three things, no matter how well prepared you are, you can never anticipate. And how you deal with those three things and how each candidate does is going to determine who wins this election. We probably had more than three things we couldn't anticipate in this one, uh, but uh, I think we just have to stay steady, stick with our plan. Uh, keep delivering the message that uh, Hillary Clinton is delivering about building the country we want to be and the people that we want to be for the future of our children and the next generation. Joel Benenson, thanks for coming in.